So if you own a Crown Victoria, Lincoln Town car, Mercury Grand Marquis, Mercury Marauder, Panther car in general, um, or many other Fords with this kind of um, climate control, you probably know that sometimes it'll get stuck. For example, in my car, I can put it to any setting and air only comes out of the um, defrost and through the floor. There's no air coming out of there. There's lots of air coming out of there. And lots of air coming out of there. So today we are going to be fixing that. Number one, cheaply, and number two, easily. Uh, all it takes is a few O-rings, and it can be done for like about 50 cents. And you can do it for free. Stick around to the end for a giveaway. I'll give you more details in a bit. Alrighty, so what we are going to do is actually just completely remove this module from the car, and it's remarkably easy. All we have to do is take this trim piece off, remove four 7mm bolts behind there, and unplug the things that are uh, connected to it. So let's start with removing this trim piece. It's all one piece and there's three pigtails, one for the defrost, one for these buttons here, and one for the um, airbag light. So we'll start by just literally pulling on this and it kind of sometimes gets caught. There's like a little um, stud in there for to guide it, like a guiding stud. You just have to wiggle that out of its home and you can pull this off. Uh, these are metal clips down here. They do sometimes get uh, a bit stuck. So feel free to, uh, don't be afraid to give it some force. There we are. Now don't just go and try and pull this off because like I said, you've got those pigtails there. So we'll disconnect one, disconnect two, and disconnect three. There we go. And I'm just going to set this in the back because we don't really need it up here. Now we have access to the um, climate control, climate controls. Alrighty, so as you can see, we have one, two, three, four, seven millimeters. All these are identical, so it doesn't matter which way they go back in. Alrighty. So now we can kind of pull this out. There is two pigtails and some other interesting connectors back here. Uh, it's going to be difficult for you to see this. Uh, I'll see if I can try and get a shot um, kind of later or whatever, so you can kind of see what's going on. But you're just gonna kind of turn it a bit um, these cords here don't have a lot of extra room to move, um, so really you can only get it at about 90 degrees, kind of like that. Um, so what I'm going to do is disconnect the pigtail, the black pigtail first, a bit of a wiggle, there we are, and then these other vacuum hoses here are held on with uh, 10 millimeters. So they're kind of 10 millimeter nuts, they're kind of weird. So you'll be needing a deep drive socket for this so you can reach kind of down in there and undo them. And with those out, we can wiggle this off and then we can remove this last gray pigtail. There we are. Now we have the entire climate control unit out and we can take this inside and go work on it. Alrighty, so now all that's required is undoing these two T20 bolts and then we can get inside to the solenoid and start replacing those O-rings. So now what we can do is just lift this cover up and remove this. This is where the solenoids are, the solenoids are housed and the only thing keeping this in place is this pigtail here, which you can just kind of wiggle off. There we are. And you can set this aside. Alrighty, so these are the four, the four solenoids. Each of these has one um, of the O-rings. So what we're just going to re do is remove this whole module here to make it just a little bit easier. And to do that, all we need is a Phillips head screwdriver, and we need to undo all 10 of these screws. Alrighty, so with all those screws undone, we can now just kind of wiggle this free and set this bracket aside for right now. Now all that's required is to remove these solenoids. The easiest way to do that is to take a prying tool, undo um, this guy here, this little tab, 
and this one. And then what you can do is kind of pop these little, I don't know what you really call these, but these little tabs, I suppose, pop that up so that it's not in, you know, so it's not secured by the little stud there and then just kind of wiggle it free. Uh, I have another pry tool here. What I can do is remove or pop up this one as well. So now with that off, and get rid of those for right now. Um, this piece will fall out probably. I'll show you how to put that back in here in just a second. And then what you can actually just do is remove this little metal bracket, pull that completely off, put it to the side. And here is the solenoid itself. Now, this is the O-ring that you have to replace. As you can see, I've already replaced it. I've already done this job. Um, I just wanted to record the video. So what you just do is you can pull this, pull the old O-ring off. You might need to use tweezers, uh, depending on how old and cracked and broken your O-rings are. And then you just slip the new O-ring on. So I'll show you how to do that here. So I'm just gonna pull this one off like this. Kind of, sorta. There we are. Then you can just slide it down the rest of the way. There you are. I'm gonna put this back on here because this one's brand new. Perfect, just like that. Now for reassembly. Just so you're aware, there is also um, a spring and something else in there, I can't remember. Yeah, that little guy. So this guy I believe is reversible. Oh, maybe it isn't. Uh oh. Alrighty, so after checking on another one, I can confirm that this goes in like this because the spring kind of sets in right there just like that as you can see so then this just goes in here like this with the flat end down and the spring in like that all right so with the o-ring replaced here what you're just going to do is slip um this back into here then you're going to slip this back onto here Now, you're going to set this kind of castle nut-like thing um, such that the open end is like this. So that this, uh, will the camera focus? Here we are. So that this end goes on here like this so that it can just sit flush. If you don't do that, it simply won't sit flush. So if we try and do that, you can see it doesn't sit completely flush, whereas this way it does, okay? So now we're going to slip this on here the correct way. Now this does like to move around, so I kind of like to get it lined up properly. Hold it with my fingers, because it has to go like that. I don't know if you can see that very well. It has to go like that, as you can see. So these, see, there we are. So these, the inside lines have to kind of line up with the outside lines. And then you can just slip this whole assembly back on here like this. Oop. This is kind of a juggling act, I must admit. There we are. Slip this on here like this. And then put these back into place. There we are. And this should hopefully just kind of press on to here nicely. It does take a bit of force. There we are. And after just a bit of negotiation, we got it back on there. And it's just a matter of bending these back down to keep it secure. And that's all. We can now start to put everything back together. Uh, all the wiring goes on the bottom to the back, just like this. And sometimes it you do kind of have to snake it around. Oh, and don't forget to make sure that all the Tabs are also pushed down. Again, I make the mistakes, so you don't have to. So, with all the wiring to the back, we're going to set this into place. Make sure it's all aligned and all that good stuff. Just like that. And now we're going to put all of the Phillips head screws back into place. We can put this all back together and put it all back in the car.
Alrighty, all the Phillips head screws are back in their place. Now what I'm going to do is put this all back together. First and foremost, what we're going to do is put this connector back in its place. This connector is idiot proof, so you can't put it in the wrong way, which is nice. Put these in their little guiding slots there. And now we can put the uh, two T20 Torx screws back in place as well. Alrighty, so this is all put back together. Let's head out to the car and we can get it put back in the car and make sure it works properly. Alrighty, so back in the car, we're now going to get everything buttoned back up and put back together. So first I'm gonna put the pigtails in. These are also idiot proof, which is nice. Can't put them in backwards or in the wrong spots for that matter. And then we're going to connect these vacuum hoses. Don't forget the little 10 millimeter nuts that go on there. These are kind of a pain to get back on. You just have to be patient with them. Just like that. Make sure that's seated on there nicely. And what we can do now is slide this back into its home and get these seven millimeters back on here. I recommend putting the bottom ones in first because just how this is positioned, sometimes it likes to go like that. And then it's kind of a pain to get those bottom ones in last. So I recommend putting them in first. All right, so with all of those in place, now we can grab this trim piece, plug in the pigtails. And snap this back in. Make sure those guiding studs go into their holes as well. That might um, cause a bit of resistance. And just like that, your climate control is fixed. So now what we are going to do is fire up the car, make sure it all works properly. So like I said, I ordered a hundred of these on Amazon for $10. Now I'm never going to use a hundred. So I figured I would give the rest away. I have 85 left. I've already given a few away. So I have 85 left. That's 17 sets. I'll give you five O-rings completely free of charge. Um, four to cover the climate control itself. And then one, say, say if it happens to break or something like that. Um, like I said, completely free of charge. Shoot me an email. Um, go into my YouTube channel. Click the about. And you should see for business inquiries only. There should be an email there that you can shoot me an email at. Give me your address and I will make sure they are sent off to you. Like I said, completely free of charge. Um, this giveaway, uh, you should be seeing this video June 20th. So I'm going to close the giveaway July 20th. So that gives everyone about 30 days to reach out to me. Or if I run out of O-rings, then the giveaway will be closed. So it'll either be closed if I give away all of the O-rings or um, July 20th, whichever comes first, I suppose. Anyways, like I said, car is back to factory settings, which is nice to see. And uh, I have cold air conditioning blowing on my face now, which is awesome. Anyways, that's about all. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, have a good one.